Hi everyone, and welcome to the next video tutorial with My Memory Suite digital scrapbooking software. Version 4 is the latest release of My Memory Suite and is now available at MyMemories.com. I'm Lisa and I help host the Facebook page and blog for My Memories, and today I'd like to just do a quick how-to and show you how to use some of the order and alignment tools that are available in the software. These can be great time savers and give your page a totally professionally designed look. This uh, video is going to be pretty short and sweet, so I'm going to get right to it. One thing I would uh, like to mention is that the tools that I'm going to show you today might be really helpful when you're trying to use some of the monograms and alphabets that come with some of the sets that you like. Um, some of these will show you um, a quick way to, to get those all lined up and ordered properly. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to come over to the Embellishments tab. You can see you can also pull your embellishments in one at a time from the left-hand side resource gallery. But to make it a little bit quicker, I'm going to go over to the Embellishments tab on the Control Panel, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. I'm going to click to Add, and I've already got open the Let It Snow kit from Just So Scrappy that's available in the uh, MyMemories.com design shop. So I'm going to choose to add um, three or four of these um, little candies that she's got in this set. And one thing that you might have noticed is if you hold down your control or command key, you can select more than one item at a time to add to your page, which is a nice feature that they added one or two versions ago to make quicker work of getting those embellishments on your pages. That's especially helpful too when you're doing alphabet ads, which I'll show you in just a couple minutes. So I'm going to apply these to my page. And what you'll see is that uh, once I've got them here, they're all kind of stacked up and pretty close together. Now, what I need to do to use this tool properly is to select some or all of the items that are on my page. Now, because I'm working on a blank page, there's nothing else for me to, to work around, so this should be pretty quick and easy. If you are working on a page that has other elements on it, just be sure to click individually to the items that you want to uh, line up or, or put in order. Um, since I'm working on a blank page, I have a couple of different options. I can do the Command A to select all the items on the page. I can click and drag to highlight all the items on the page. These are individual little squares. They're just showing up like a little line because I've got them all stacked on top of each other. Or I can select each one individually by holding down the Control or Command key and, and choosing all of them individually. Because they're all stacked up pretty tight, I'm just going to use the uh, tool here to select all of them at the same time. Now, coming up here to the little order and alignment tool, and if you hold your mouse over each of the little boxes on your toolbar up top, it will show you what that is and what it does. This one is the Align Objects tool, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and I am going to line these all up. Now, let me show you a little bit better. If they're randomly spaced around the page, this will be a little bit easier to see. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and click and drag to, to select them all. That's a quick, easy way to select them all. And then what I'm going to do is come up to this order, uh, not order tool, this is the alignment tool. And then I am going to choose either to align them by the top or the middle or the bottom. Now these are all the same size and shape objects, so this will be a pretty standard no matter which of these options you choose. But I'll show you in just a second what it looks like if you choose some different shaped objects. So I'm going to choose to align these by the bottom. And by clicking on that bottom option, you can see how it now lined them all up perfectly straight in a line by, by whichever one was in the lowest position on your page. So if you wanted to choose, let's go back a minute, if you wanted to choose to put them somewhere in the middle, just choose that middle alignment option and it will pull them to wherever that middle object was. Now, while they are still all highlighted and while they're still all selected, I'm going to go ahead and work with some of the spacing tools that are also available in that Align Objects uh, button on your toolbar. And I'm going to space them evenly. You can space them evenly vertically if you happen to have things lined up and down on your page, or space them evenly horizontally. Now you can see that they are all nicely spaced. Now these happen to still be touching, but it's very easy for me to space them out even if I'm got them all crazy like this. It's very easy to still go back and then use the Align Objects button and space them evenly horizontally. So even if you don't want them all lined up in a row, it can still be used to space them, which is a really nice feature. Now remember, while they're all selected and highlighted, you can always continue on and use your shadowing buttons and all of that type of stuff while they're all still selected, which is really nice too. So even if I looked at them and now decided that I wanted them all lined up, I can still go ahead and go back and put them all in a nice order. Um, let me show you real quick. Let's remove all of these. I'm going to go back to the 
embellishments and I am now going to show you if I added a couple of different size things how nice this is that this works this way too. Okay I'm going to apply a couple of different items to my page that are different sizes and different shapes and now let, let me space them out a little bit so you can see in a little more dramatic fashion how this will be helpful with your uh, pages. Now I've got different size shapes and things here so I'm going to go back and select them all. Remember you can use Command A um, to select all the items on your page if these are the only things you're working with or you can click and drag or click them one at a time however you want to do that. I'm going to go back up to the align objects and then I'm going to because I've got things that are different heights I'm going to go ahead and choose to align them by the middle so that they'll all be spaced where the center of them is all in a nice line. Now while I'm still um, all selected I'm going to go ahead and line them up um, according to how they're um, spaced evenly. Now it's very easy to switch things around so that they're in in the matching order. I mean that's that's just completely up to you. I'm going to space them by the middle and then I'll space them evenly. Now you can see there's an exact amount of space between the, all the items that you have selected. Remember just go ahead and add a shadow if you want to. That always gives your elements a little bit more pop off the page. Then you can always continue to manipulate them individually or if you want to make sure that this group uh, continues to stay spaced and act as a group, remember you always have the group tool which is command or control G and then it will add everything to a group which then you can move, you can resize, you can rotate um, all as a group. There's another um, video tutorial that will cover all of those things in particular for you and it's the grouping tool, not grouping tools, um, the um, yeah that is the grouping tools video so make sure you check that one out. Now where I find that this is especially helpful is we're going to go back over here and then instead of going to just some of the embellishments we're going to go to the monograms and where you might find this really helpful is when you're trying to spell words or names or um, letters let me just choose a couple of random letters remember by holding down your control and command key you can select more than one item from the embellishments panel on the control panel side if you're pulling them from the resource gallery you still have to pull them one at a time but this way it allows you to add more than one at a time okay so I've added all of these letters to my page I'm going to just space them out a little bit randomly here I guess I should put them in order so it looks a little bit better let's do a B C D E F and no matter what you were trying to spell this will work out fine I'm going to head, go ahead and select them all. I'm going to add my shadows just because it's a little bit easier for you to see them that way. And then I am going to use the bottom because remember letters are often different sizes. Sometimes though if you have a letter that hangs down underneath, sometimes you have to use the middle option of the, um, of the ordering tool to get them to all line up. But these happen to all be straight across the bottom so I'll just use that bottom option so that they're nice and even. And then I'm going to use the space evenly and now you can see that they're all nice and situated. Now if I wanted to spell a name this is a perfect way to, uh, to do that. Now this even works nicely if you have decided to go through and rotate some of the uh, options that you have or the embellishments that you have. It still is perfectly fine to be able to line these up and use the space evenly option as well. So that is something that you can do even if you've done a few little changes or when you've resized um, alphabets that type of thing. See, even even it will pull that bottom level, the bottom point of the alphabet that you're choosing over to, uh, and they must still be spaced pretty accurately. So that's a very easy way to make quick work of lining up letters when you've added just a bunch of different things. Even so, if I were to choose, um, I think, let's see, let's try and add in a couple of those, let's pull some of these little pearls. So if we were trying to add these in into the letters as well. Let me give it a little bit more space and then mix them up a little and I'll show you. By adding these little embellishments in the middle, let's add one more. I hope everybody has one. There you go. Now I'm going to align these by the middle option because those pearls are smaller. So now you can see it kind of gives you a nice and because the letters are different heights sometimes you may have to do some small adjustments but it's it's an easy way to get them all uh, lined up pretty close to the middle. 
then I'm going to space them evenly. And now you can see that it just gives a nice uniform look. It's very easy to go back and add shadows that way, even though I already added the shadows to my letters, the pearls didn't have the shadows. So it just is an easy way to be able to use the, uh, the features in the software to make your pages look nice and uniform. Now, while I have this um, situated, I'm going to show you a little bit about the order tools that are also available, because those are the tools that make it really easy for you to move layers from the top to the back or somewhere in between. Anytime that you are on, you clicked on an embellishment, you can right click and it will show you the order tools right here on the right click menu. And also the alignment tools are available there too, so if you right click, then those are available for you as well. But the bring to front, send to back, bring forward or backward options make it really easy for you to layer the objects on the page that you really want to have in the order that you want them to be on. Let's go ahead and add um, one of those cute little snowmen. See, if we put the snowman on last, because things will always pop onto your page in the order that you add them. So say I wanted to use this snowman, but I want him in the back, so all of the letters are on top of him or her. I guess this could be a girl snowman. I'm going to, to right click or use the order tool, which is up here right next to the alignment tool. And remember, like I said, if you hold your mouse over the uh, tool, it will show you what it is, which of course is not working right now, but that's how it works. So I'm, oh, because I wasn't selected on an item. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, this will show you that you can change the object layer. It's, it's the order uh, button. So I'm going to click on that and it will allow me to bring it to the front or send it to the back. And this will show you in the little yellow message, send object to lowest level. Bring forward will bring object forward one layer at a time, or send backward will send it backward one layer at a time. Now, if I right click on him, I also get those same menu options here. So if I sent him to the back, now you can see that all of the letters that we previously added are all on top of him. Now, what's fun is if I wanted to have him kind of on top of some things and underneath some other things, that's also very easy to do by changing his level one step at a time. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. If you want to, you can bring forward one level at a time or also the little keyboard shortcuts are available here. I happen to be on a Mac, so that's shift, command, and the arrow keys in uh, on your PC. That would be shift, control, and your arrow keys. So if I do that, I'm going to bring him forward one level at a time and you can see that he kind of comes in front of one thing at a time until I have him on top of everything that's on the page so I can go all the way through. Now I can send him backward the same way. See how each of the individual embellishments is popping in front of him with every layer that I click on. So it's very easy by doing the arrow keys and the control or command shift key to move him one layer at a time. Also if I wanted to now that he's all the way in the back in one step I can bring him back to the front. Let's give him a little shadow. There you go. Now he stops, uh, he snaps off the page a little bit further. But it's really helpful when you're adding uh, different things. Let's see, let's add, like if we wanted to, we pull a snowflake sort of late in the page and we say, oh, you know, I'd really like that tucked under the back of the snowman's head. It's very easy to send it all the way to the back. And now it's kind of sneaking in there in the back. So those are the ways that you use the order and alignment tools to get everything situated on your page. One way that this is really helpful too is if you have photographs or different things that you're trying to add to your page and you want to make sure that they're nice and neat and square, it also works very well with that. I'm going to go ahead and add a photo box and resize it a little bit so I can fit a few more on the page. And then I'm just going to copy and paste a couple of additional uh, photo boxes to the page here. And if I've added these all kind of in a random pattern, it's very easy again to click and drag to select them all. And then I can go up to the top, remember, or right click, and I can use those alignment tools to center them, align them by the top, middle, or bottom. These are just square photo boxes, so it's really not going to matter um, because they're all the same size and shape. But it's very easy when things aren't the same size and shape to use those as well. Now I'm going to also right click and then I'm going to choose to space these evenly and now you can see that they're all spaced. Because I added them in a way that this one happened to be the last one, that one will be on top. If you add them and order them in the order that you put them on the page, then they'll be in the right order. But remember, you can always bring that one to the front so that they're all situated the same way. 
Now if you added, I don't know if I've got any photos pulled up here on my These are very easy now to add just different photos that I have on my page. So those work still the same even though that they are ordered and grouped together with no problem. Okay, now um, the other thing I think I will show you real quick is what that looks like if you're trying to space things horizontally on your page. So let me just add another page here too. And I don't know if you realize you could do that by closing the resource gallery. Sometimes it gives you a little bit more space on your page. So by clicking the resource gallery bar, it allows your resource gallery to close or to open if you need that additional space. Sometimes when you're working on a laptop screen, it makes it a little easier if you have a little bit more room. So I'm just going to use this add page button to give me another blank page to work on. And then I'm gonna go back over to the embellishments tab. And I'm going to add some of those, let's see what else we have on here. Let's just add some of these snowflake ribbons I'm going to click to add three or four of them. Okay, and then I'm going to apply those to my page. And I'm going to close this. And I'm going to show you how they work if I wanted to align and, and straighten these um, up and down in a horizontal manner. Okay, I am going to use this middle option here because these are the ones that I'm going to want to use horizontally because I'm either going to want them centered um, or lined up by the left, center, or right. Um, because these are all the same exact size and shape, it's not going to matter which of these tools I choose, but you can see that if it's something that would be different sizes and shapes, how nice it is to be able to choose that option. And now I'm going to space them evenly vertically instead of horizontally because these things are lined up uh, up and down. Let me add one more so it can show you if I have them kind of all at random. Remember by clicking and dragging to highlight them all, now all I have to do is go to the alignment tool and I'm going to center these so that they're all in a line right down the edge. And then I'm going to space them evenly vertically, which they were pretty close to already. So it didn't really make that much of a dramatic difference, but you can see how it would work. I'm gonna add a little shadow to those and then we're done. So that's a very easy way to use the tools that are available in the software to get everything lined up just so, so that you have um, the look that you want on your page when you're finished and also to use those tools to make nice, easy work of spacing out your alphabets and monograms so that they are spaced evenly, quickly, and all of that for you. If there's ever anything else that I can help you with, be sure to send me an email at lisaj at mymemories.com. Also be sure to check out the group page that we have set up for the project 2013, which is a cover-to-cover -cover project. We're working through getting a couple of pages done every month so that by the end of the year we have a completed project ready to print. And also be sure to check out our Facebook page and blog for our memories uh, page as well. As I said, if you need any help or further information, please send me an email at lisaj at mymemories.com. And I'm going to wrap this one up and let you get on with your busy day. But thank you for joining us. Thanks always for your time and attention. And we'll see you on Facebook. Have a great day.